What's up, people? We are here. We're back uh, with our with our most popular segment and the only segment we do. Uh, man, good times after step up to your line, but we always go with the home run. That is shoot your shot. The first matchup, House Lasku versus One Bar Wildy. Well, it's No Bars Wildy because the man is blackout right now. Maybe he's in the zone. Who knows? Um, Salt Bray, you are you are headlining this uh, category. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Yeah, I'm um, I'm up this week with a question. We're keeping it topical. Uh, with the trade deadline last week, I want to know, in your opinion, which team won the trade deadline? Uh, Wildy's going to go first. Uh, okay. Get my timer. Have you guys talked about this before? Don't need to. No, nope. I don't Ooh. need to. Well, I definitely don't need to now, but I had to. George, take notes. All right, Wally, in three, <laughs> two, one. Right, so I'm not even catering to my audience here, but in my opinion, the winner is Miami. Because they have got the most back for giving up the least amount. They were able to keep their key guys and were able to get Victor Oladipo, a player who we've kind of really covered this previous in this podcast, but somebody who's wanted to be there for the past four years. There's a lot to be said for a player wanting to play in a particular city when players are getting more and more freedom about choosing where they go despite having years left on their contract. So they have that core. We've talked about how they've had a bit of a, bit of a rough time up and down with their with their record wins and losses, but they are still in the playoff picture at the eighth seed. They've now added this piece, which has allowed their younger guys to resume back to the bench where they thrived the most in last year's playoff run. So I think they're going to be looking... Oh, am I, am I done? No, no, no. no. Oh, I thought you put your hand up. Oh, OK, yeah. Um, so they uh, now have a... So, yeah, I know, you're right. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's going to, uh, personally, that's winner. That's kind of all I have to say on it. Um, I think that those are the those are the key points. And, um, you know, as long as they get into the playoffs, now they have these pieces, uh, they're going to be looking the strongest. But, you know, as I said, they got the most back uh, for what they... All right, we're, we're, uh, we're not going to admit. I sharpened you a bit, so I let you go on. But... It's kind of Westy, bro. Yeah, I, <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I was waiting for him to do it. It's all good. It's all good. He was like, oh, yeah, it's still right. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I tried to do the, like, you got 10 seconds left with the hand thing. We didn't really communicate it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, it's which is right. really fun. Um, Ed, you're up next. Uh, in three, two, one. So the team that won the trade deadline is the Chicago Bulls. The reason I say that it's not just because they got the best player during the deadline, Nikola Vucevic, is that it also sends a message to the organization, uh, to the team and the players saying, we want to win now. It's now a different mentality shift for the Chicago Bulls players. They, everyone goes in season, we want to win, we want to be competitive. The organization are saying to the Bulls players, we want to win now. We're showing our faith that we believe what we have right now in building can get wins. And by putting that Vucevic, they didn't just get better on the court, but they also better by having extra pieces they got better by having a better mentality around the team and thinking we are in a win now position Zach Levine's going to get better the other young players are going to get better the reason Orlando wants to keep Vooch is because of his veteran presence and what he can provide to the younger players providing this to the Bulls as well will be a great thing still got, still got 10 seconds no that's no, fine I, I got All the right. main piece of cool. the elevator music on that was uh <laughs> Very, very compelling arguments there. Um, and you're both trying to go for home with picks. So, yeah, this should this should be a good one. I like where you're coming from, Wildy. Obviously, the Heat did bits and they picked up a lot of really good players. I think that probably missed someone who has actually been playing a lot for the Heat recently. Didn't go out the trade deadline, but Trevor Ariza, who has been closing games, unfortunately was the one who uh, who fouled Damian Lillard on that three when they lost. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, get those reps in now, not in the playoffs. And Absolutely. then Ed, again, obviously, Vooch is an insane player. Uh, but I think the Bulls did kind of, they won, but they didn't win as well as they could because, as I mentioned before, I wanted them to get Alonso, get Gart as well. Um, despite that, I think that the Bulls won the trade deadline. My additional reason um, will be that the, the little tie steal they did on the side was really, really good for, for defence as well. 
Um, but Ed, Ed's taking this one. It's a really nice pick up that Thais piece coming off the bench, man. That's that's really strong. There we have it. The battle of the homers. And it hasn't gone the way that we thought. Let's head to the second matchup. We don't believe you, Bray. We don't believe you. <laughs> we don't believe you. Nobody's buying it. Poor Brian. Right, let's head to the second matchup. It is the sixth man, me, versus House of Three, headed by our very own Lancashire Lambeer, always keeping the door closed since 97. Is that right? Yeah. Damn right. All right. <laughs> Cool. So let's also keep it topical, just like Bray and with the trade deadline. But I'm going to flip it and I'm going to say who were the biggest losers from the trade deadline. So we'll go with George first. One minute on the clock. Three, two, one. Off you go. Now there's a right answer to this question, and that is the Houston Rockets. During these trades, they essentially got... Anthony Bennetted, essentially. They got hoodwinks, hijinks. They, they're gone. They lost everything. So they they had Oladipo, but then they decided to get rid of him. And but let's go way back to that original trade where they were getting rid of Harden and they had the chance to have Karis LeVert. And now Karis LeVert is out off performing um, with the paces and doing mad numbers. But... Oladipo didn't perform quite how they wanted, and now they got rid of him. And what did they get in return? Uh, they got Avery Bradley and a couple of pick swaps. And let's face it, to get anything from that pick swaps, they need to get ahead of the heat. And do you think that's going to happen? Do you really? <laughs> Tidy finish there. And on time. Very precise. Um, Alex, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Off you go. Guys, I'm going for the juggler here. For my choice, I'm not picking an NBA team. I'm picking the person who holds the top spot in the sixth man at the moment, and that's House Lasky. So let's break down what team Ed has and why I think he's taken an L. He's got the magic. They've blown up their team. They're actively tanking by trading away Fournier, Gordon, and Vucevic. That's a lot of L's. Knicks didn't get Lonzo. We're on the market for Drummond. Didn't make a move. And the Bulls, Celtics, and Heat all got better. They have one of the toughest schedules remaining. The Clippers, they trade for Rondo. If that's playoff Rondo, that's great. However, this is a regular season with a weaker locker room to the Lakers. We all saw what happened in Dallas. Jazz, most of the other contenders have got better. Nuggets, Lakers, Nets and Sixers. The Jazz did nothing. Plus Jordan and Wildy are right on his tail. So I think his reign at the top might be over. You got 10 seconds to spare? Don't need it. Doesn't need it. Wow. What a twist. Um, I think two great arguments. Jord loved the rocket shout um, with obviously Oladipo and then all the way back to the Harden trade. They've just had an absolute mare um, going on there. They've just basically just traded James Harden for absolutely nothing, um, which is quite impressive. Fair play to them. And then uh, what a twist, um, Alex. I think, to be honest with you, like Ed's had an absolute disaster from this trade deadline and the question was <laughs> which team lost the deadline mo lost most from the deadline and I guess Ed does have all these teams within his GM so I'm going to have to go with um, Alex on this one yeah, oh the risk paid off that's what we like to see I feel like Loki when he went up against the Hulk <laughs> <laughs> That's why you, when you asked, you were like, Do, who have you got? And I was like, don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, observation. <laughs> yo, Ed, Ed looks like Thanos when he's completed everything. He's just sitting on that hill. It's like, what I, do? <laughs> um, I use the stones to destroy the stones. <laughs> Ed did get a win. Uh, in his matchup, and I, I took the win. So, yeah, again, great discussions. We move to, well, Haslasku. I know this is um, this is your segment. You might you might be angry at me, um, so I'm I'm uh, I'm slated to hand over the reins. It's fine. When you're at top, you know you you got all these haters all over. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've got the two biggest haters right here to to on the camera to my left. They're both right there. The two big haters are 
like there and there so it's fine so, i didn't know your audience yeah as soon as ed it was over that was yeah. it <laughs> you saw matt and he's like oh sorted no i'm doing <laughs> cool it's in the bag it's in the bag uh so I, I love a little quiz so i've got another one for you guys uh instead of doing the everyone has to come back go out and come back in we'll just do a round robin and I'll give you an easy category for fuck's sake, people. And let's try and get at least three answers <laughs> each. Um, so we'll do it again in order in a circle. So I'll go from Alex or skip me. So Bray, actually, let's do it in a circle, full circle. So Alex, skip me, Bray, Wildy, Jordan, Matt. Uh, so in a clockwise, well, on my camera, it looks clockwise. I'm not sure how the output will look. So category is easy. Um, no one look at the fucking sheet that we have because i've got all the answers there so don't be a dickhead okay um it's we all need to mute now uh no no, no so everyone's gonna be a call, so that just sheet out. that sheet 12 yeah anybody who, sheet 12. who thinks oh i wonder what sheet 12 is <laughs> don't look at <laughs> sheet 12 <laughs> right uh <laughs> oh I, I don't know what sheet 12 is. I just, just, yeah. um so <laughs> i'll take sheets? i will do roughly 30 seconds between picks from each person. Um, so again, start off with Alex, then we'll go around the circle. Alex, you'll say the first answer. Blah, blah. The category is people, players. Let's say, I'll stick to players. Players in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Place, players in the Basketball Hall of Fame. There's so many you can say. A lot of yeah. legends are out there. Even if you're not 100% sure, just throw a name out there. They could potentially be, be there. So... <laughs> 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 But he's gonna make it. He'll make it one day. Yeah, it's gonna be somebody. <laughs> um, all right, you ready? Spoiler alert: there are no Andrews. Okay, that's, that's one big clue. I'm gonna oh, you're you. telling Just me text. Bynum didn't make it? There are no Andrews. I can't, can't think of any more Andrews to throw in there. So I was um, at Bynum. All right, Naismith Hall of Fame. Uh, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna fucking check that. But yeah, Michael Jordan is definitely. On <laughs> he's not in it. We're gonna go with Larry Bird. <laughs> yeah. Actually, let, let me just quickly just annotate. Oh, no, there's 200 of them. By the way, there's 200 of them, so I'm not even going to bother annotating them. But yeah, go. Wildy? 1992 Dream Team. Can we just stick to players? Can we stop doing this? Right. He's trying to get extra points, extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I apologise. I'm an artist. Yeah. Classic. You've got one of the best Hall of Fame speeches. Yeah. Uh, Shaquilius O'Neilius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt. Matthew Johnson. Yeah. Uh, I'm not checking these names. I'm just assuming. But yeah, go ahead, Alex. Oh, are we back to the start? Yeah. Yeah. Bill, Bill Russell. Yeah. Chuck. Did you say duck? Chuck. Oh, Chuck. I thought you said duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Cousy. I think he, yeah, he definitely is there, but you know, when it gets to the old guys. Yes, 1971. Me? Yep, yeah, George. Clyde the Glide. Matt. Hakeem. Yeah. Al. Dominic. Dominic. Nick. Yeah. Patrick Ewing. Yeah. Dr. J. Yeah. Uh, Peyton. I thought you meant Alfred. I'm like, I hope so. <laughs> uh, no, Gary Payton should definitely be on there. Yeah, he is all of it. Yeah, Gary Payton, 2013. Mm. Three, Mabdul Jabbar. Yes. You even point score. Pistol Pete Maver Maravik. Butchered the name, but yep. Yeah. <laughs> what was still? Yeah. Lou Hudson. Oh, I was hoping you'd say Lou Will. Uh, How do you even niche ones already? <laughs> I can't. I, I can't explain it. I just. Yeah. I was just thinking Hudson. it goes deep. Oh no. Oh, fair. No, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. All we right. go from there. We go there. 
<laughs> First casualty, George, you're up next. Uh, Tracy McGrady. Yes, T Mac. Kirby Brown. Yes. I was hoping to have this later, but um, what, uh, <laughs> name of our friend, Sam Jones. <laughs> Let me double check. Kevin McHale. George. Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Yep, 2011. Oh, yeah, I remember his speech, of course. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, of course. We'll follow that up with Scotty Pippen. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah Thomas. Oh. Which one? No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, John Stockton. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. You have to say the other guy. He just said yeah. Stockton. My brain is gone. Um, oh. why white chocolate? What's his name? Uh, I don't know. Oh, he's done. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. done. He's I'm done, out. bro. I'm, I'm out. You set, you set the play up for him. Lord's out, Mr. Harris. Carl Malone. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh you missed that, George. I don't know, man. <laughs> Mr. Ward. Uh, Sean Kemp. Is he? Yeah, I wasn't sure. I, reckon, I bet he is. That's a that's a rogue shout, Sean Kemp. It's on the theme of nineties, so I thought I'd go with it. Oh for fuck's sake, I keep on scrolling too far down the list. S so I wrote it down as soon as you said GP, but I was like, like I'm not I wasn't sure enough to go for it. I don't think he is there. Oh, it depends on also the way he spelled his name, Sean. Uh S H A W M P. I think mean, he's there. Is he Just shake the head. He is not. On the list. Wow. Damn. Damn. Six-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA, second team. Mm. It's, it's the battle of the battle of the mats. Uh, is it me? Yes. Moses Malone. Yeah. <sighs> fall, fall, fall. <laughs> Harris. Steve Nash. Yes. Uh, Kevin Garnett. Yeah, recent. I was literally just about to say that. Um, Tim Duncan. Is he legible? I don't think he's he, in yet. I don't think he's in yet. I don't think he met the. I don't think he is, unless it was during the pandemic. <laughs> it had to be in literally the last year or something. Because yeah. it's 40 years, I think. Evan Garnett was in the 2020 Hall of Fame alongside KG and Kobe Bryant. Oh, of course, they all went it. Yeah, I can't say why I know what I'm about to say because it'll give away answers. But anyway, wait, hang on. Did he make it then? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're still alive. Okay. Yeah. We're still alive. Yeah. yeah, because we've had KG as an answer and um, Kobe Bryant. I'm going to go with Oscar Robertson. I just said Tim Duncan, though. Yeah, no, Tim Duncan was. So. Oh, Tim reason... Duncan was in it with them yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, so, sorry, uh, Bray, what did you say, sorry? Oscar Robertson. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watching real ball is like the big owl. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about <my> buckets. <laughs> the big owl. <laughs> um, young boys. You can be good if you take the game serious. I'm going to throw a wild one in and say Phil Jackson. I did say players. I did say players. Um, I know he did win two chips. He did win two chips with the Knicks, but he wasn't that sort of player. I think he's in as a coach. Yeah. Mm, I'll I'll allow it. I want to go. (laughs) (laughs) Bray just wants to flex after last week. But okay, cool. (laughs) If Bray wants to allow it, cool. Go ahead, Bray. Bray, Bray, if you get this one wrong, if you get this one wrong, you go down to zero. Game over. (laughs) My, yeah, my, <laughs> my next one's a flex. Cheryl Miller. I'm not gonna fucking go. Oh, for fuck's sake, Cheryl with a C or a S. 
I think it's a C. I'm like C C H E R Y L. I can't oh. believe you just didn't do the other one. Reg, Reg, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Next. <laughs> Come on, Matt. Step up to the plate, boy. Wow. I in theory should be out here. Let's just let Bray just do his thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, we've, been, we've been going I'm on. just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me. So Mr. Bray takes this version of back to back. He revenges his poor performance after last week when he had a Chris Webber moment. He forgot he didn't have any timeouts left over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I thought we had a timeout left. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. You actually killed me. <laughs> uh, if you guys haven't seen Kenny Smith, I know you hate him, Ed, but him taking the piss out of Chris Webber with his timeout when he's going to the big board. Who matched it? Very games. good. Yeah. Matchstick knees, matchstick knees. Uh, yeah, so that wraps up our extra segments for this week. We'll be back with the same stuff next week. As Ed said, please feel free to bring in suggestions. Um, let's hope. Let's hope for um, another good week of basketball. So yeah, from Six Man myself and all the other GMs, it is over and out. Peace. Ciao. Ciao.